Now, today we're going to look at ventilation. Now, the introduction to ventilation is basically in leaving their construction, what they're asking about ventilation now is heat recovery units, how to get in fresh air into a house and then take out stale air and make some gain of doing this. And the best way of doing this is using a heat exchanger up in either the attic or in a utility room, depending on how your house is laid out. Now, this here 3D diagram basically showing what's involved in putting in a heat recovery unit and putting in mechanical ventilation. So what we have to look at here is the red lines here, this is all the stale air. Now, stale air is just air that has been, uh, we've breathed it in, we've breathed it out. So obviously if it's going into our bodies, it gets warmed up and then we release out carbon dioxide, but that's actually got warmth in it. And this whole system here is actually going to use that warmth. Okay. Now, so first of all, requirements for ventilation in a house. So why do we need to have ventilation in a house? Now, the reason we need to have ventilation is, first of all, dilute or remove pollutants. Now, what pollutants are? Look, carbon dioxide. In an earlier chapter, we looked at radon gases entering a house. So what it is, if you've got a mechanical system, you can actually take out the radon out of the house. Okay, by using this. Now, it's not the best method. It'd be far more successful if we put in our radon barrier first and stop radon getting into the house. Okay, so you'll always put in, we'll say, a radon barrier. But to take out, for example, carbon dioxide, this method, ventilation is required. Now, we need ventilation, for instance, if you have an open fireplace. An open fireplace requires 140 cubic meters of air per hour. So for a fire to work efficiently, it needs to get in that air. So that air has to come from somewhere. So in a traditional house, we have that air coming in through gaps in the building fabric. We have wall vents, we have vents and windows, and we have windows that can be opened and closed. Okay, so that's all forms of ventilation. But the reason we need to get it in is, first of all, dilute or re remove pollutants. Then you need air changes. Okay, now air changes is, and they write it in construction studies as air changes per hour. Now, so the reason why we need air changes per hour is to control condensation. For example, if you sit in a car, and say it's during the winter time and the car engine is turned off and say you're waiting for a parent to come out from the shopping. If you're left there for any length of time, what you'll notice happening in the car is what? Yeah, you'll have condensation building up on the windows. Now, when the car is running, why is there no condensation? Yeah, you're going to be, you have your air conditioning unit on. So the air conditioning unit is bringing in warm air, putting it against the glass, so you have no condensation building up in the glass. Okay, so what it is, the problem sitting in a car, you're going to have condensation build up if there's no mechanical system preventing it from happening. Okay, now, to stop it happening in a car, the easiest method, if you're left in the car, the easiest way to stop that ventilation or that condensation building up is how? Open a window. If you have a window open, what it means is you're not going to have that build up of condensation. Okay. So, but the problem with most houses then is if you have windows open, you're going to lose heat. So you can't open windows just to get rid of condensation. So we have to look at different methods and how they're enforced now into building practice. Now, the next thing then is quickly ventilated kitchens, bathrooms, utility rooms. Now, the main thing in a bathroom, your main task there is to get rid of excess moisture. So for example, if you're having a shower, there's steam being produced. That steam goes up, hits the ceiling. In most modern bathrooms, you have an extractor fan. That extractor fan 
takes that heat and sends it straight outside. Now, the reason you're taking that heat outside is you don't want that steam to hit a ceiling, get cooled down by the ceiling, and then eventually have growth on the ceiling. And what it is, the growth you'll have is you'll have mold growing on the ceiling because you have a warm, damp, ideal conditions for, grow, for mold growth. So that's why in most of your bathrooms at home, you have an extractor fan in the bathroom directly above the shower to take out that. Now, the other place you have an extractor fan is in your kitchen. So in your kitchen, over your hob, so when you're cooking, say, potatoes at home, there's steam coming from that pot. The steam goes up, you have the extractor fan on, that pulls it straight outside. Now, the only, and this is in most modern houses, how they've been built. Now, we're still linking this back to passive housing and passive thinking. We can make better benefits of all that heat. In my house and in most of your houses at home, you turn on the extractor fan, it takes all that steam, sends it straight outside. There has to be a better way of using that heat a lot better, and there is. Okay. Now, the next thing then is to rapid removal of pollutants or excessive moisture in inhabited areas. Now, the next one then is provide fresh air into, we'll say, areas. For example, if you're inside in a classroom, and I've used this example several times, if you're inside a small classroom with a lot of people in the classroom, after about 20 minutes, the classroom gets stuffy. Now, the reason the classroom gets stuffy is there's not enough fresh air coming in. And what it is, you'll feel kind of drowsy. Now, that only happens when you have a large group of people in a small area. It won't happen in a large classroom. For example, inside in this woodwork room, it won't happen. The reason it won't happen in this woodwork room is there's plenty air supply in this woodwork room. And what it is, if the door opens up, an air, fresh air supply comes in. But in a small room with a lot of people in it, the people are using up the air a lot quicker. Now, you're never going to suffocate because enough fresh air will come in. But what it is, it'll still not be removing all the carbon dioxide you're breathing out. So that's why even if you're in, we'll say, an assembly area or we'll say in a, in a town hall and there's a lot of people in it, it gets stuffy very quickly. If you go to see a concert in a town hall, it's probably the main problem with concerts in a town hall. They're not ventilated properly. Okay, there's not enough fresh air getting in. Now, pollutants. We've looked quickly at pollutants. What pollutants are? Okay, so carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Now, also odors. For example, traditional diet in Ireland would be having cabbage and bacon. Now, if you walk into a house in an evening after school, you don't have to ask if there's cabbage and bacon for dinner. Why not? You'd smell it. So that means we'll say, if you have a proper ventilation, you shouldn't smell it. Like that smell shouldn't be drifting through the whole house. So the whole idea of ventilating is to get rid of odors as well. So that type of odor as well. Okay. Now, air changes. So, air changes. What's needed for air changes is 0.5 to 1.5 air changes to control condensation in the entire building. So, what that means is the total amount of air in a room for either 0.5 of it, which is half it, up to one and a half times it to change in an hour. So, if we take the volume of air inside in this room, to have a correct air change inside here, we need to take half this air and move it out of the room and get in another half the volume. Now, it's happening automatically because if we look underneath the door, you see a gap, so you know there's fresh air coming in. Now, this is not an airtight room either. So we know with the heating on here, there's air escaping out. So that air that's escaping out is replaced by fresh air coming in. But that happens in a building that's not airtight. Now, mechanical extraction fans, mentioned about them in the kitchen, okay? Purge ventilation here, 
is we'll say rapid ventilation so what it is it's by opening a window or door so for example if there is a smell inside in the classroom basically what a teacher would do is open a couple of windows let the air circulate very quickly so it's kind of purging in ventilation very quickly into the room next thing then wall vents now how many of you have wall vents at home right wall vents excellent for bringing in ventilation the problem is a lot of people tend to cover them over and the reason they tend to cover them over is because if you have that air circulating out through the air vent you mean you're losing heat as well okay so obviously they're not ideal it's good for controlling ventilation but it's not good for heating now that's just the basic introduction into ventilation next thing we're going to look at is in your one note we're going to look at the natural ventilation which i would say the entire class have at home now if we look at the natural ventilation here what we're looking at here what looks like a standard house if we look at the kitchen first of all we have the cooker here the hob we've got our pot we've got the steam here being extracted out out through the wall and then out into the atmosphere okay so we're removing all the steam next thing then if we go to the bathroom we have our shower we have our steam being produced so it goes up through an extractor fan here and it's being out into the atmosphere okay now if we look at we'll say a bedroom what we have here with the windows we could have a vent on the actual window itself so if we have a vent on the window what it is there's air going to circulate out and fresh air to come in same in the living room here and if we have air escaping out here what we'll also have is air being pulled in here and what it does it circulates through the whole house by going underneath doorways okay now so the over ventilation means that too much warm air is being lost so if we underline this here that we'll say over ventilation is where we have too much ventilation going on in the house and we have all this air that's leaving the house taking heat with it then under ventilation then means not enough fresh air coming in and what it is that would be an ideal condition for mold growth to occur okay now the natural ventilation is very easy what it is it vents on doors vents on walls okay so for example here we have a vent on the wall here so that's all natural ventilation if you open up a window that's natural ventilation okay the main problem is in the depths of winter in this country to get in this will say ventilation you're not going to open up a window okay so that's your natural ventilation and it's a very short piece about natural ventilation the next thing we'll go on to is mechanical ventilation now mechanical ventilation in a modern house will not only be mechanical ventilation it'll also have heat recovery involved in it now the first piece here just mentions a small bit about mechanical ventilation and what they have in short here they have mvhr okay and that's what will be printed on the exam you'll see this mvhr so you'll see that printed on the exam so you'll need to know that it's mechanical ventilation and it's with heat recovery now if we look at it here there's a couple massive advantages of it right and the massive advantage of it is how we're actually going to ventilate a house but not lose any of the heat now if we look at this here this here is the exact same house as previous with the same cooker with the same bathroom but what we have in this is up in the attic in this house we have this heat recovery unit that's also vent uh, bringing in ventilation to the house now this here is just a diagram of what it looks like and i have photographs and other diagrams to show you all this now what we have here fresh air has been taken in here goes into this here so there's obviously a circulation pump there's a heat recovery transfer unit which i'll explain 
all go through this and then what happens then is this air goes down into the rooms so for example if we look at the diagram here we have air coming down into the living room here so that air has been warmed it's fresh air and then this air transfers throughout the rest of the house now what we have in the kitchen we have warm moist air being taken out of the kitchen when it's taken out of the kitchen it rises up here it goes into this heat transfer unit and the heat is taken out of it and then it is brought out then out into the atmosphere now because we're taking heat out and air out of this room here it has to be replaced now where it's been replaced from is from somewhere else in the house so for example it's been replaced from the living room here so what we have here this is the warm fresh air and the warm fresh air has been pulled around the house now this system will only ever work in an airtight house will not work in a house that is not airtight because if your house is not airtight you're going to have gaps in the building fabric for example you're going to have a gap between this wall and the floor you'll have heat escaping out there if you have heat escaping you have air escaping so this has to be in conjunction with an airtight house now if we look at the notes here and these are all notes that i've produced for this to explain it so if we're asked this in the exam a lot of these bullet points here is what we need to know now so if we quickly go through a well-designed balanced heat recovery unit is essential part of a building of a passive or low energy house okay so if if you're going to have a passive house you're going to have this system you will not have wall vents in a passive house you can't because it has to be airtight if you have a wall vent in your house and some of you have said you have wall vents you do not have an airtight house okay now the mechanical ventilation heat recovery system ensures is a high quality of air while maintaining a balance between ex um, extraction points located in wet rooms and supply points located in dry rooms now we we'll look at what's a dry room what's a wet room okay now it's fairly common knowledge most of you would actually guess what a wet room what a dry room is a dry room would be your living room a kitchen would be regarded as a wet room the reason for the kitchen is you've got steam in it but another wet room that people don't take into account is your utility now inside in your utility room you'll have your clothes dryer you'll have your washing machine you possibly might have a chest freezer and what you have there is you have all heat coming from these appliances so all these heat coming from these appliances gets taken into this vent brought up into the attic all that heat is taken out of it and then the heat is brought back into the house by heating up the fresh air now the mechanical heat recovery unit should be only installed in homes and buildings that are airtight and well insulated so they're key points now this here same similar diagram again now in all a lot of these diagrams they show an extraction point out through the roof you have an extra in point taken in from the roof as well in most modern houses you don't build and break the roof this could be these points here could be taken out through with say a gable wall so what you'll see in a lot of these houses is you'll see two vents and only two vents they look like your standard air vents on your cavity wall but what it is one is taking in fresh air one is expelling stale air and the only thing is they can't be side by side so they have to be away from one another okay so what it is so that you're not taking in stale air through the fresh air induct so they need to be separated and we look uh, have a look at how they are separated now this here is the heat exchanger now we'll go through how it works in a few minutes now basically if we look at here and the principles of this heat recovery basically what we're looking at is and we've mentioned it a couple of times already we're taking out stale air and what we're doing is we're bringing in fresh air 
And what the most important part and the most effective part of this is where the heat exchanger is involved. So the heat exchanger that's used recovers over 90% of the heat of the stale air. So for example, all that heat that's in the kitchen, that heat goes up to this heat exchanger in the attic or out in the utility room. And what happens is 90% of that heat is captured and brought back into the system. There's only 10% of it lost. So for example, if we have an open fireplace and you put on a fire, you have 80% of that heat going up the chimney and you've only 20% coming into the room. So this is a really, really efficient method of getting heat. Now, the thing about how it's done. Now, there's a bypass system. Obviously in the summertime, you don't need this heat exchanger because what it is, you're not going to have heat on in certain rooms. So what it is, you do not want to be heating up, we'll say, heating up a living room in the actual summertime. So what it is, there's obviously a bypass system here. Now, principles of it here. Now, there's notes here on how it's done. Okay, there's notes on it here. Now I'm going to skip these notes. These can be all read in your own time. This here, the whole advantage of this, and there's a note here mentioning about 20 degrees Celsius. That 20 degrees Celsius there, that means that the house is going to be 20 degrees Celsius all year round. So even in warm weather, you're going to have 20 degrees. In the winter time, 20 degrees. So it's a comfortable temperature inside in the house. Now, the other thing as well, there's a couple other things regarding, we'll say, this heat recovery unit here that we haven't mentioned. There is an air filter. There's an air filter cleaning the fresh air coming into your house. Now, some of you might suffer from hay fever during the summertime. Anyone? What it is, hay fever is caused by a high pollen count. If you, and the thing that people that suffer from hay fever are told not to do is don't have windows open because pollen will come in. Don't dry your clothes on a washing line because the pollen will stick to, we'll say the clothes. You wear the clothes in and your hay fever gets worse. In this system here, you have air filters, which is the same as the air filter you have in your car. So any fresh air that comes into the house, the first thing it does, it actually cleans this air. Now, what's the only disadvantage of having filters? You have to service them. They have to be changed. Okay. So there's a cost there of changing all these filters. Okay. Now, but for example, if you have, we'll say, a person that's suffering from asthma in the house, it'll be a far healthier environment because any dust mites can be taken out, cleaned, and any fresh air comes in, it's clean air that's coming in. Now, the performance of this, and these are bullet points here, what performance, what these heat recovery units have to meet. So what they're saying here is, this is what it has to do. So what it has to do here is, it has to bring in, for example, fresh air to be brought into the house. It has to supply 30 cubic meters per hour per person. So this can be obviously you if you have a party going on in the house, there's a setting on this to turn it up so that more fresh air is being brought in. On top of that, if you go away for a couple of weeks holidays, you'll actually might turn this onto we'll say vacation mode where there's no one in the house, so it's going to bring in a lot less fresh air. So this whole system can be controlled. Now, the extraction then, the levels in for extraction for the kitchen is 60 cubic meters per hour. So that's what is taken out of the kitchen. Next thing, bathroom, 40 cubic meters. And obviously the bathroom is going to be a smaller space. So that's why it's a smaller number. Okay, toilet storeroom, Utility ensuite, all again smaller rooms. So what it is, it's 20 cubic meters. So that's what it's doing here. Now the next thing then is what we've looked at: air changes requirement. So the air change requirement, the system used to balance for the in, 
the entire dwelling to ensure minimum air change rate of 0.3 okay so you're getting 0.3 air changes per hour that's a minimum requirement it has to do so it means that it has to take out a third of the air in the actual hour the third of the volume of the air in an hour now that's just the points and all the key bullet points now there's no easy way but you have to read through these and be able to reproduce a lot of these inside in the exam but the main advantage in this question is there's a lot of images and diagrams that you can draw for this topic as well so here we have advantages and disadvantages of the system another popular question that's asked in construction studies exam so advantages we've just them listed here so these are all the advantages here so for example filters pre prevent pollen and other uh, allergies from coming into the house reduce dependence on fossil fuels for heating air so remember again we have no heating system this is the heating system in the house now what we have here dependent um, only two breaches of the external building fabric so what we're talking about there is the vent that is bringing the stale air out the vent that's bringing the fresh air in they're the only two pieces of the building fabric that are broken the rest of the section of the house is airtight so to get fresh air into the house it has to come in through this ventilation system now what we'll look at is we'll look at the images and i'll go through this in more detail now on how the actual heat exchanger works and why it's so efficient at working and like a lot of this is actually common knowledge what we look at we look at this diagram up here now this diagram here warm air from your kitchen bathrooms goes through the vents into this heat exchanger now this heat exchanger inside this here has thousands of very thin metal plates and it's a reason why they're metal plates now the metal plates what do we know about metal it's a conductor so the metal when you pass all this warm air against metal plates and it goes at one side of the metal plates it heats up these metal plates now when, so after it heats up the metal plates it has lost its heat so this is where you're getting your 90 percent of the heat so your 90% of the heat that's being captured is happening in these metal plates. So you've only 10% of the heat leaving the building here. So point number four here is where the stale air is going out into the atmosphere. Now, after that, point number two is fresh air coming in from outside. So this fresh air coming in from outside is going through this heat exchanger. Now the thing is, it's now going to hit the opposite side of these plates so it's designed in such a way that it'll hit the opposite side of these plates so when cold air hits warm plates what's it going to do it's going to heat up so the air is going to be heated up by these metal plates so what you'll have then is this air then being heated up which is fresh air being brought into say the living rooms and bedrooms of the house and that's the basic principles of how this heat recovery unit works now basically this is a very simple diagram basically the only thing else you have on this is two fans one to pull the air out of the rooms and one to pull the air from outside bring it in and pump it around the house yeah it's run by electricity so your two fans are and this is the only but remember in this type of house you are not paying for oil you're not buying coal you're not buying timber you're not buying turf you're only paying for the electricity to run this so this is what's heating your house so on top of that you'll have no radiators so when you're building the house you won't have a plumber coming in putting a radiator into each room you won't need them now if we look at some of the pictures then now this is a good picture this here shows what the actual unit looks like 
So obviously they don't show the insides of it, but the ar red arrows here are just arrows I've put on it here, just to show the direction of air. So what it is, this here is where all the metal plates are contained. Okay, so what you have here, all the heat is going into these metal plates. And what you have here then is the cold air here coming here, hitting these metal plates and getting warmed up. <coughs> now, this principle here has been around a long time. For example, every single one of you have travelled to school today, either in a bus or a car. Where is this principle used in a car? The radiator at the front of the car or the front of the bus. What you have happening there is you have warm liquid, water with coolant mixed through it <coughs> inside the radiator. That keeps the helps to cool the engine. What you have is if the front of the car was covered over and no air got in, what you'd have is you'd have the temperature gauge in the car going way up. Okay, so what happens in a car is all that fresh air as you're coming along, driving along, hits, we'll say, the radiator. Radiator, and if you look at a radiator carefully, you'll notice that it's divided up in thousands of sections to funnel air all the way across it. Now, what you also have in a car is an electric fan behind it to pull air through the radiator. So, say if a car is stopped in traffic, you still need this air circulating to keep the engine cooled down. Okay, and that's the principles of, but it's working slightly in reverse. What we are doing there is trying to lose heat out of the radiator and how you lose heat is by bringing this air now it's a similar principle in this okay now the next thing here is and this here is a very good diagram all right because it shows a modern contemporary house here and basically what we're looking at is blue is fresh air and red then is your stale air being taken away so you can see here in this setup here what we have Living room here, fresh air coming into the living room. Here in the kitchen, it's a really large kitchen here. So what they've done with this really large kitchen, over the workstations here, they have an extraction pint. What you have then in the dining section here, they have a pint bringing in fresh air. Okay, now, a lot of the time, basically you might have only one, one vent in a room. And it's either going to be extraction or a pint, a, pipe bringing in air into the room now what we have here our bathroom over here we have a bedroom fresh air being brought into a bedroom now what we have here then a utility room here air being taken out what we're looking at here the unit based here on the wall now next thing then is you have extraction pints so now basically if you have it on the corner of a building here normally what would be done here is the extraction pint would be on one side the intake point here would be probably placed on the other wall here so that there's no fear of any of this air coming out from one straight into the other one okay now the next thing that we look at here is ducting here now this here is ducting here placed into a house now this ducting has to go into the ceilings so this is one method here and this method here is used on a house that has got hollow core floors. Now the hollow core floors are placed in, the ducting is fitted onto this, and after this stage then, what has to happen is, timber battens have to go onto the ceiling, and then your plasterboard. But these are, we'd say, plastic fins here, wrapped in with insulation, right? With this space-aged insulation here. Why? Yeah, stop any heat loss in the actual ducting itself. There's no point getting heat from the heat exchanger and then losing it through all the ducting. So this ducting is super insulated so that all the heat gets into your living rooms, into your bedrooms. Now, if we look at the next one here, the next one here is up in an attic. So you'll see this up in an attic and you'll see all the heat exchanger here, everything colored in this space age insulation. Now, this space age insulation, it's becoming more popular in the market. And what it is, it's very thin insulation layers, but it's as effective as 
300 mil insulation for its thickness okay so what it is but it's really expensive because of that but it's ideal it's ideal for putting on ducting and everything like that how you bring what it is basically when you're building a house and you've decided you're going to have a passive house the heat a heat recovery manufacturer will come out visit your house and plot out where all these vents will have to go so as the house is getting built for example you have the two different style houses here so what you have here is your your hollow core floor so in your design for your hollow core you're going to have to drill holes in your hollow core to bring these vents through so obviously this can only be done when you have the hollow core put in for example in a, a standard we'll say and a common enough this is a timber frame house where you have we'll say your truss roof what it is your vents are going to run between each of the joists here so you'll see them being run between the joists and obviously this here is done before the whole attic is insulated okay now the last thing then that i have here for you it's a video and what it is the video here goes through a passive house and this heat recovery unit so it goes through the whole workings of it and shows you around the house that has this and explains shows you the filters and different things here so look i can play a couple minutes of it here now this is obviously a youtube video here and what it is i can move up through it here but this goes through all the key things of how it works it's great to be outside on a day like today we're out in the fresh air but most of us spend most of our time in buildings and with the passive house you might remember that we want really an extraordinary level of air tightness we want 0 0.6 air tight. with a system like this now what i've done there is this here is your heat recovery unit here now anytime you're playing these videos what you can do here is just hit on this link up here it brings you straight into youtube so you can see it full screen okay now this goes through the whole heat recovery unit here right and how it works right the ins and outs of it now the last thing based on this topic here then is looking at in your construction book mold growth and for example this here happening at home now if this is happening at home you have a problem with ventilation what it is the problem with ventilation is there's not enough ventilation so what it is you've warm air in the room hitting cold surfaces and what it is you have this mold growth here so a couple reasons for it you could have cold bridging happening in the structure where the cold air hitting the building fabric on the outside cold is coming in and what you have then is this mold growth growing on here because you've warmed in the room warm air hitting cold surface and condensation occurring right and it's quite common in houses built in the 70s and 80s to have a certain level of this and obviously the main rooms in a house that suffers mainly from this is your bedrooms and the reason your bedrooms happen is when you're asleep at night you're expelling all this moisture so all this moisture is going into the room and what it is it's landing on surfaces that are cold and what you have is condensation so the condensation then over time will turn to mold growth so what it is to prevent this from happening you have to increase the ventilation now in a standard house it's like having vents on your window wall vents and this is why people shouldn't be blocking up wall vents yes you're losing heat out through the wall vent but you're stopping this from occurring here okay now that's now the last thing that we'll have a, a quick look at then on this chapter then is the type of question that you'd be asked now these are all we'll say standard enough questions from the book here now in a question based on this it's a common question in higher level and what it is it'll ask you for advantages different disadvantages of putting in this heat recovery unit it'll ask you a diagram how to draw a diagram of this so to draw a diagram of that what you'd look at is you'd look at the notes here 
And you, if you want to do one as elaborate as this, you could. But what it is, you have to show where the fresh air is coming into which rooms, where the stale air is leaving. Okay, and you'd want to, we'll say, have some mention of this here, of the heat exchanger and how it's done. 